Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. Peace, peace, peace to the streets. Salam Allah to the Supreme Angels. I'm your brother in the struggle, Brother Minister Ali. Happy Ramadan. Ramadan Allah. Ramadan Kareem. Whatever way you want to say it. Your niya or your intention is the thing. So today, I would like to share with y'all a little clarification, if you will. And I mean, sometimes... I'll cover so much information that, you know, it's hard to process and remember all that stuff. You know what I mean? Because 90% of the time, I'm just really going freestyle. You know what I mean? So I like to really give y'all a premise. You know what I mean? Um, that's the professional way. Uh, shout out to the guy that made um, the video, Death by PowerPoint. <laughs> I mean... I learned a lot from him, you know what I mean? As far as, um, you can just give too much information sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like over, sensory overload, you know what I mean? The human brain can only remember like seven things at one time, you know what I mean? So, so it's like, um, uh, even all this mumble jumble, you know what I mean? I was going to write it freestyle, but I didn't want the board falling while I'm writing on it. I'm a little heavy handed, so I just... Had to tape it on the on the easel here. I mean, just to simplify. But um, uh, I actually intend to do this stuff like this on PowerPoints with the earphones and all that kind of stuff to make it more easier and simpler. You know what I mean? Uh, before we begin, let me give a shout out to Cash App. You know what I mean? Um, they did a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job today. You know what I mean? Um, I, the brother uh, called me, and you know what I mean? And he was like, I usually show my ratchet stuff, but today I want to bring Brother Minister Josh, man, Riddick, and bring the team in, you know what I mean? Let them go ahead and do some, something positive, you know what I mean? But a lot of brothers looking at it like you're mixing oil with, with water, you know what I mean? And it, it's like, you know, you can't mix oil with water, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a lot of fake and spooky and false premises that people put out. And that's why they get the wrong answer sometimes. And I mean, you know, like um, the old axiom, um, oil and water don't mix. If you put some egg in there to mix, if you're not a chemist, you wouldn't think it would mix. <laughs> it sounds hip to someone that don't study the sciences of life. But if you study the sciences of life, you know, you'll have that God consciousness. You know what I mean? You know, so the day we're going to rewind on one specific subject this Ramadan. You know what I mean? And that is, is the nation of Islam, and I don't even want to say nation of Islam. You know what I mean? You have the United Nations Islam. We're the universal nation of Islam, in my opinion. You know what I mean? But you have different ministers, different branches, all of whom I love and respect and learn from, you know what I mean, and support, you know what I mean? But um, to simplify it, I like to just go to the root, like go right to the direct teachings of Masfar Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know what I mean? And when we do that, you know, we get the right interpretation, the right guidance, the right methodology, the right culture, the, the right righteousness. <laughs> I mean, you know, so so we had a right God. <laughs> I mean, you know, so so we, we're going to look at some things. And the last time I just went freestyle and I just read little things from the messenger, but it was like, too much, too fast. Now, I mean, you know, Muhammad Ali used to explain how he used to just go freestyle because it's live. You on the, you know, he talking to sportscasters, whatever. He just dropped jewels freestyle, but you know, it, it could go so fast that the people miss it. Like, yo, slow that down for me. Oh, wait a minute, I'm a Christian. You what did you say about Jesus? And I mean, you know, so you you gotta you gotta be patient with the people. You gotta know how to have something for the lay people as well as the scholars. You know what I mean? You know, so so that's all in it. You know what I mean? And um, I was explaining to the um, 
Cash App today, you know, I was like, listen, bro, don't worry about what people think about you and your, do you, make it happen. Now, I mean, you show and prove that vision. Now, I mean, it's it's like, he, he had a girl shaking that butt and all that, you know, that's all over the internet, sad to say, hip hop, um, videos on like you're not going to get a bunch of people coming to hear me talk this teachers on how to eat to live or the teachers down but they like man we're not trying to hear no positive do for self black power we need entertainment we we need a rally a march a big building um some fancy clothes everybody pull up in that nice car showing off now i mean we we want to we want to um <laughs> be a pretender, not a real defender. We not willing to kill and die for this. I mean, you know, it's like, like it's real, it's real hip to act like you in a struggle. I mean, but is you really willing to live, build, kill, and die for the people? <laughs> no greater charity does a man or woman have than to sacrifice their life in the struggle, according to the Bible, according to Jesus, not I mean for that neighbor as he puts it, or that brother or that sister. Not I mean so so it's like um I send my condolences um to the family. You know I mean, you know, I don't even want to get into that, but um long story short, the police reportedly posted that killed this young boy and his big brother killed the cop that killed this little brother and he was his lawyer argued he should get a new trial because of racism. In my opinion, that's the wrong argument. You know what I mean? But I guess that was the best argument he could raise. You know what I mean? But um, they executed the brother. You know what I mean? They just killed him the other day. You know what I mean? So we're still getting lynched in this thing. You know what I mean? You know, those that are willing to sacrifice, those that are on long-term segregated lockdown, you know what I mean? In the cell, you know what I mean? 23 hours a day, one hour out, you get yard, you get a five minute shower, then you lock right back in unless you sign up for law library or something like that there. Now, I mean, that's the world I'm, I know. I mean, those are the type of um, heroes and sheroes I know. Now, I mean, you know, they, they, the, the devil is not going to sit idly by if you're a true freedom fighter. If you're a maroon, <laughs> if you're, if you're, if you're a real five percenter, a poor righteous teacher, not that you're just broke, <laughs> you're just poor. <laughs> I mean, you ain't righteous, you ain't teaching nobody, you just poor. <laughs> I mean, no, you have to be a poor righteous teacher. Everything being relative, you rich in spirit. You know what I mean, you know, so so it's like same thing with the um spiritual cream puff. You got sweet fruit, bitter fruit, sour fruit. Unripe fruit, rotten fruit, it's all kind of fruit, all kind of flowers, all kind of MGTs, all kind of fruit, FOIs out there. I mean, so we, we got to like avoid making cookie cutters out of soldiers. Everybody's not the same. You know what I mean? You know, um, our beloved brother, Minister Nori Muhammad, um, plans to come to Philadelphia. So we want to be out there to support the brother. He's going to be at um, Uncle Bobby's tomorrow. And I think he's coming another day after. I believe it's Saturday and Sunday or Saturday and Monday. I'm not too sure. You can find it on Eventbrite. Tickets are free. Just downloaded the app, the um, Eventbrite app, and print out your ticket. You know what I mean? If you could um, make it down there, make sure you go see the brother, dynamic speaker. You know what I mean? I, I like to call him a little Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a he's a inspirational, dynamic, and highly intelligent and effective and efficient student follow of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know what I mean? So we support our brothers and sisters in the struggle. Also, if you're down there, make sure you stop at um, Sister Muhammad's and get that real bean soup, the real bean pies, the real sea moss. You know what I mean? You got the vegan stuff. You got the fish, the chicken, whatever you want. They, I mean, they, they got something for the, they got the final cause in there. Now I mean, so 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 um shout out to the family. Now I mean um so we're gonna cover just these brief things and my brain be ripping and running like I said all the time. But one of the things, let me backtrack for a minute, because I was telling you about the Cash App 
And I explained to the brother the short version just so you, you won't get caught up in the spooky stuff. People are like, how he over here um, got a publication with girls shaking their booty and they talking how to roll a blunt and um, how to drink liquor and don't get a hangover or whatever the case may be. And at the same time, he want to come out and bring on some positive people active in the struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I explained to him, I said, brother, you're thinking like a God. That's, a, that's, that's how it's supposed Meaning that it's sad to say this is America. You know what I mean? And in law, you have what's called legal precedence. You know what I mean? And one of the good things about it is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his wisdom. You know what I mean? Now, I want y'all to reflect on this for a brief second. Imagine the 1960s and the 70s at the height of black liberation, black power movement, if you will. The largest pornographer, the largest smut magazine, if you will, X-rated magazine, adult uh, magazine showing women naked and all that was Hugh Hefner's Playboy magazine. Now, also, um, I learned this lesson from the messenger and... I, I even I even learned it from Rolling Stone, for example. It's like, yeah, they could have acid rockers, um, eye candy, talking crap. You know what I mean, because some people like that. That's what I mean. You know, you can't you can't you can't try to force everybody with these cookie cutters. That's one of the things I don't like. Is like everybody black should be Democrat. It's the Republicans that freed the slaves. The Democrats say, keep them niggas in slavery. You know what I mean? So my thing is, I'm not Republican, never was Republican, and I'm not Democrat. I never was Democrat. I'm always independent. Like Malcolm X put it, the bottle of the bullet. You know what I mean? You can load your gun. That don't mean you got to shoot. You know what I mean? But you just, you just, you just ready for whatever. Like, okay, should I bust my gun or not? You know what I mean? You know, should I cast this pile? Should I vote for this dude or this girl, this lady? You know what I mean? Should I vote for this black guy or this white guy? Should I vote for this smart one or the dumb one, the big devil or the little devil or the medium-sized devil? You know what I mean? You got to vote in your best interest. Your best interest may not be our people's best interest. <laughs> I mean, you know, you'd be like, if, if you just came home on parole, and you got a state governor running saying, if you vote for me, I'm going to give Pennsylvanians another stimulus check. Everybody going to get $2,000. You're like, damn, I could use $2,000. <laughs> I mean, then you have another politician. His thing is like, um, um, we have to stop abortions this day. He's like, I, I, I like some of this guy's stuff and I like some of this guy's stuff. I don't like some of this guy's stuff, and I don't like some of this guy. What is in your best interest? Now, I mean, you you may personally be like, um, my mom told me, like, in my situation, um, my mother had to have a spinal tap. I never in my life had a birth certificate. So all that Illuminati crap that you be hearing people with, to this day, I never in my life had taxes, identifications, none of that. Because I never even had a social security number. Now, I mean, until I was like, in my mid thirties or something like that. And I mean, you know, but I never in my life had a, a, a birth. They never took a print of my feet or none of that. Cause people be born by midwives. I mean, I, I was born in a taxi cab. I was taken to a medical school. I wasn't taken to, a, I was get taken to um, a, a, a nursing school and they gave my mother who was still a Jew, she's like 16, they gave her a spinal tap and it could have paralyzed her. So when I was physically born, the void of lawsuit, they like, that nigga baby wasn't born here. <laughs> I mean, so I, you know, so that that followed me my whole life. I never had, you know I mean, identification and all that kind of stuff like that. Thing. I'm, you know, I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. Put it like that. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is, you, ha I have three sisters, you know what I mean? And, you know, you have people that can really understand 
a woman's right to choose. Not that you agree with abortion or disagree with, it's like, that's irrelevant. Why are we <laughs> putting our opinions in the home of a man and woman and family that's, I mean, wrestling with something. That's none of our business. We need, sometimes you just need to mind your business. I mean, see, this, this is the, a different generation. See, in my day, you get punched in your mouth. What are you all in my business for? Back up. I ain't explaining nothing. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, it don't, it don't go like that. Now, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's sad that people think it go like that. Now, I mean, but you got um, men Telling women what to do with their bodies. That is so disrespectful. That is so, not just chauvinistic. That's that slave master mentality. Black or white. You know what I mean? That's the, that's like, come on. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I, I personally um, don't agree with abortions, but I definitely agree that black men have been uh, destroyed through chattel slavery, so we don't have the institutions, we don't have manhood training, we don't have our own economic systems, we don't have um, our own villages, and you know what I mean? So it's like the family is broken. We come from broken homes. Now I mean, you know, we come from the hood. I mean, y'all know how it go. Now I mean, so it's like I don't want to see women using no hangers. I don't want to see no quack doctor um, bringing women in his um, living room performing abortions and killing them. They hemorrhaging, bleeding on the table. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like if you're going to do wrong, do wrong right. <laughs> I mean, it's like, at least try to make it safer for a woman. You know what I mean? Like, that's one of the fundamental amendments to the Constitution, the 14th, the right to be secure in your own person. I mean, against unlawful searches and seizures. They, they talking about charging the women with murder and all this other crap. I mean, so it's like, I'm also conscious of genocide. I'm also conscious of these devils trying to stop the black nation from rising. I mean, you know, but at the same time, I'm conscious of the other stuff. So you got to, it's not me right, you wrong. It's a thing of, you should be able to think and study the, the, the issues and the problems and the politics and the socialism, the classism, the racism, the sexism in, in America and come up with a formula that best serves you and your interests. Maybe you'd be like, man, I'm worried about my, my son, my daughter, my wife, my mom, my, yeah, my grandma, the community, my hood, the, this, the, the Africa, the world, the nation of Islam, whatever. I mean, whatever is in your best interest. That's how you're supposed to do that. You know what I mean? So um, I basically explained to um, Cash App uh, that the message in analyzing it, he looked at both sides. And his thing is like in the lessons, 17 ways to play Islamic culture. He said actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. You know what I mean? So he allowed his top minister, Malcolm X to be in a smut magazine at the height of the Nation of Islam career. He, in the golden age of the Nation of Islam, he allowed Malcolm X to meet up with Hugh Hefner and do an interview in the smut Playboy magazine. I read that article years ago. Malcolm, that was a dynamic interview. Now, I mean, like, Whew, so much wisdom, and you just be highlighting all that stuff in that joint. That joint is crap. Now, I mean, you know, they got the little white girls and all that in their neck and all that. They got the negative there, too. But this is America. It's negative everywhere. I mean, it's like you, you're, you're not going to watch TV because the commercial may show women dressed in panties and bras. I mean advertising Bali bras or something like nature there. It's like, yeah, you got not to take the good with the bad. This is America. Now, I mean, that's not justifying it. We know her history. I know, I understand institutionalized racism very well. Now, I mean, experienced it. I lived through it every single day of my life as a black man. Now, I mean, but at the same time, the message also allowed Muhammad Ali to do an interview in the Smut magazine. Now, I mean, and that's not 
trying to condone porn and all that there or the degradation of women because they got whatever. But the thing is, is that it's showing that as far as the nation is concerned, like, okay, Malcolm's interview from this magazine is going to reach so many men and women, millions, you know what I mean, worldwide. And from that, you're going to catch up some fish. You ain't going to catch me. He, he might have saved 80,000 people just from that one interview over the years. You know what I mean? You, you, a, a young boy in prison, he looking at, at the smut, and then he re see the article. He going to read this article like that. You know what I mean? Read this junk. And wake up and change his life. <laughs> I mean, change her life or whatever. You know what I mean? So, so, so I explained to him it's, it's a science to that. You know what I mean? It's, it's a mythology to that, how you systematically have to move. You know what I mean? I remember years ago, I met um, a real good, intelligent brother, Mutatabor, Sunni brother. You know what I mean? We lived together for a moment. And he was like real disciplined. Like, he don't watch TV, listen to music. None of that. Like he don't listen to no. He don't listen to conscious hip hop. And I was like, "Why you don't watch um TV?" He was like, "Um, oh no, I don't watch TV you know, because the gen might come through there." And I'm like, "A gen? You mean like a spirit, evil being type gen?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay." You know what I mean, you know, I respect. You know what I mean, that's his belief. You know what I mean, but I like. People think deeper. I mean, you know, so I noticed that one day he was reading the Philadelphia Delhi newspaper. And I'm like, oh, why are you reading the Delhi newspaper, but you're not reading, watching TV or watching the news or something like that? He's like, nah, I don't, I mean, I was like, the gin can't come through the newspaper? He's like, nah, because it's just a newspaper. I said, let me see that newspaper. So I, first I took him to the classified. The movies, double X super porn movies. <laughs> then I showed them the advertising of all these women half naked in their panties and bras. I'm like, it's this, this is media. You know what I mean, whatever format it may be on, but if the gym could come through that radio, an angel could come through that radio. If the gym could come through that TV, an angel could come through that TV. If the gin could come from a newspaper, an angel could come from the newspaper. If the devil could come through social media from YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, angels can come through Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You see what I'm saying? So you 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 have to have a discerning eye, spiritually speaking. Because if you resist the devil, he's gonna flee from you anyway. I mean, you know, it's like your faith in the law is so strong. Any gen that come, any negative ideas and thoughts come, man, you'd be like, I was a Billy Heaven ass shaitan or a gene. <laughs> I mean, you reject it, reject it. Get out of here. That gen be running like that. He ain't going for it. That boy do his slap. That boy make voodoo type moon, good shit, stinger. He purify himself. He studied the Quran and the Sunnah. I mean, and, and, and it's like, man, him was, he was, we was good friends. You know, I never tried to convert him in the nature of style. He never tried to convert. He was so intelligent. We could talk and have intelligent debates. You know what I mean? Like the Holy Quran says, dispute in the best of manners. Like, so he had, you know what I mean? Last stuff, Master Muhammad, you know, me with the spooky stuff. You know what I mean? And he helped me and I helped him. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's what it's about. I wouldn't care who you are. You know what I mean? The message that teaches us the 24 principles of Islam, Muslim respects all people. And demands respect from all people. Simple. You know what I mean? You know, so shout out to uh, the brothers from um, Cash App, the brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? If y'all didn't tune in, look them up on Instagram. That's Cash App with a K, not Cash App like the money joint. The C A. No, theirs is K A S H A P P. Cash App, one word. And on Instagram. Make sure y'all y'all um check out the brother. You know what I mean? Warning, you have to be eighteen or older. <laughs> I mean, warning, you can't go on there if you spooky. <laughs> Don't do not go on there if you spooky. You'd be like, what the heck did Ali just send us to? You know what I mean, you know, but 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's social media. You know what I mean, you know, that's that's how the um the sponsors come in. That's how they eat, that's how they pay the bills. And that's that's one uh of the negatives with capitalism. It's it's a blood sport, dog eat dog world. You know what I mean, you know, so so you know, it's like I see I see brothers doing all this positive stuff, but they, they may have to promote liquor. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, that sponsor may be selling uh, alcohol in the hood or something like that there. And you people could be judgmental. Oh, you, you know, they talk about their consciousness, that, and the other. I mean, and I, I remember they came at the R like that Rock Kimberlaw, who I consider one of the greatest. In, no, I consider him the best rap I ever heard in my life. I ain't, I'm prejudiced with Rock Kim. You know what I mean? But, but, um, but um, I'm saying that because it's not lyrically. It's like people that have blow him out the water, like a Karis One or Public Enemy. But some people is good with politics. Some people good at teaching. Karis One is a philosopher. Rock him like I ain't a philosopher. I'm just that laid back, cool dude that's dropping the 120. I'm 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 five percent. I'm I'm God body. I'm gonna teach y'all knowledge itself. With a gangster twist and a street smoothness that, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, especially at the time he was doing all that kind of stuff. I'm an Eric B. You know what I mean? You know, so so it's like I can't I can't say, oh, y'all should um eat butter pecan ice cream, because I like butter pecan ice cream. Oh, they like chocolate. Oh, they like white ice cream. They like vanilla. Oh, they like this the um almond ice cream, whatever. It's like, come on, man. You know what I mean, you know, that's the that's the spooky stuff that we get into. We collectively never get into a thing where we all believe the same exact thing, do everything exact. Be sixty six trillion years ago, we was already broken up into thirteen different tribes of Shabazz. <laughs> all over Africa, we was broken up into countless tribes. All over Arabia. The Holy City, we was broken up into countless tribes. All over India, we broken up in countless tribes. All over Australia, North Philly, South Philly, West Philly, all over America, that, that's just human nature. Survival of the fittest. You get in where you fit in. That's just the reality of the universe. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like every atom can't be the black carbon atom. You know what I mean? It's like, where's the hydrogen? Where's the helium? You know what I mean? You know, so so all the elements play a role in the universal order of things. And it's the same thing with black ants and red ants and um, polar bears and silverback gorillas. I mean, you know, they'd be like, we might be primates, but we ain't, we don't roll together. That don't mean that I hate y'all. I'd be like, I ain't really paying y'all no attention. I'm trying to do my thing. You know what I mean? So that's how that go. All right, that's it. Let me now get into Sami. Sami is what we call in the Arabic language fasting. Know what I mean, so it's like saw and me. Hmm. Oh, let me fix something on here. Technically, this is the saw. This is the wa. Solid. It should be a little cash run under there. Saw me technically. Know what I mean, just for you Arab scholars out there. All right, so saw me is fasting. I'm coming from, oh, don't forget, make sure y'all subscribe to the NOI Report on YouTube. Support the channel, you know what I mean, so we can take and get this thing flowing. Eat to Live, book two, 1972, is where we're coming from. I'm going to just take this one book to lay out this premise and the messenger defends himself better than me. <laughs> I mean, but I let the messenger teachings interpret the messenger's teachings. See, sometimes we'll have a piece of the puzzle or a couple of pieces connected and it fits and we think we got the whole puzzle because in our world, we think that our island is the whole universe. <laughs> I mean, but it's like 
it's other information out there. I mean, there's other life forms out there. I mean, you know, but we can't really con conceptualize that, conceive those type of ideas because of our limited view. I mean, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this by giving you exactly where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. All right. So I'm going to just take y'all through one, two, three, four, five, six short pages. The premise is just real simple. December Ramadan, according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, December Ramadan is not a fast. I get so many different texts and emails and things of that nature there on this subject here. I want I want y'all to understand this simply, simply. You know what I mean, I'm going to give it to you straight from the messenger himself because what it is is people are not wrong in what they're saying. It's just that they're not incorporating the other parts of the messenger teachings into what they're saying. You see, meaning that, yeah, we say Islam is our religion, but that jargon and language is being used because we're talking to the general public. Now, I mean, we can't be all technical with them. Now, I mean, but the messenger thing is Islam is not our religion. Islam is not a religion. It's nobody's religion. Islam is our culture. Islam is a way of life. Now, I mean, chapter 30, verse 30 of the Holy Quran. Now, I mean, you know, so so it's like the deen is not a religion. Re means to go back to ligari. The Latin means to bind, to tie up, to enslave something. We're not going back to slavery. Any religion, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, Judea, is all slavery in the organized form. Real Judaism is Islam. Real Islam is Christianity. Real Christianity is Buddhism. Real Buddhism is Hinduism. Real Hinduism is the comedic sciences, the black Egyptian meta netta, the hieroglyphs. That it's all the same thing, just given at different vibrations. It's given in different ways according to that people's language, Arabic, Latin, Greek, whatever. You now I mean, Kiswahili, whatever. You now I mean, so. So um, trying to come out of that spooky way of thinking when it comes to uh, organized religions. That's how we do politics. Democrats and Republicans. Democrats and Republicans. What about the independents? What about starting your own political party, as the message said in Message to the Black Man in America? How about voting for a law? How about vote for yourself? Now, I mean, what you need is a Muslim politician according to the Abulaj Muhammad. You know what I mean? So he's saying like, look, if you're FY, you're MGT, I'm not teaching y'all um, some spooky stuff. First of all, if you FY and MGT, you have to be a politician to be an FY and MGT. You have to be a politician for the hood, your house, the society, the world. You know what I mean? But his thing is like, yeah, we teach the fall of America. We teach the white man the devil. We know the devil's politics is corrupt and all that. But the messenger himself said he voted. <laughs> the messenger, the messenger, he voted for Adam Clayton Powell. He's like, I don't know what y'all spooky people talk about. He said he's not scared. He said it's another politician that I would vote for, but I'm not going to mention him by name. You know what I mean? So the messenger, he wasn't against politics. His, his thing is like, you know, in Islam, politics is not like it is in America. You know what I mean? We don't separate church and state. We don't separate the Quran and, and, and the state. You know what I mean? It's like the Quran is the state. You know what I mean? Politics and Islam always been one. America is unique in separating it. You know what I mean? Um, the, the Christians are little Christ. Their symbol is the anchor with the two fish. That came from Caesar. You know what I mean? Jesus would be like, um, Whose inscription is on this coin, this gold coin? It's like, that's Caesar's. He's like, I'll get a Caesar's, get a money to the, the money chain. Get a money, get Caesar with Caesar, get a God with his God. But what they don't tell you is on the back of that coin, Caesar's symbol was an anchor and two dolphins. So the Christian's symbol came from the governmental symbol. 
They would say, we got a government of righteousness, the divine government of peace we're trying to build over here. So they had, they was fishermen where the Romans, they, they gods. You know what I mean? So Caesar was the son of God. All that Caesar's was gods. When you die, you, they don't care if you was a corrupt Caesar. Like Julius Caesar got stabbed up. And when they stabbed him up, they sanctified it and turned it to a holy shrine and worshiped the dead statue of, of Julius Caesar over there right to this day. He's considered a God. He's descended from Zeus. He's the son of, if you're a Caesar, you're the son of God, the son of Zeus. For the reason to be like, hey, Zeus, that's Jesus. I mean, you know, the G, us. I mean, it was nothing spooky. I mean, but the organized religions always creep in and try to spook it up. Now, I mean, and that's what we see happening with the messenger teachers, unfortunately. The messenger teachers is not spooky. Now, I mean, if you're not teaching, you got to give the people the messenger's message to guide them through this age of mess. I, I constantly say that. Now, I mean, okay. So page 42, when it comes to... um. Fast and the messenger basically teaches us, you know, um, we should fast as long as we don't harm ourselves. Now, I mean, you know, some people try to go on a three day fast, nine day fast, and you you could you could kill yourself. You know what I mean, that's the science. So so you want to use gradualism. You now I mean, but um, we're going to. I want to read to you um, from page number forty two, so you'll get this in context. All right. Remember the premise is. Is December Ramadan our Ramadan technically, or is it our fast technically? I'm saying, according to the teachings, the original, divine, direct teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, December Ramadan for the nation of Islam, specifically, he's going to explain. For himself, Messenger Elijah Muhammad and his followers, meaning I ain't talking about the organized religious stuff, but if you're an FOI and MGT who follows the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he included you with himself. He's like, it's not a fast to him and it's not a fast to the FOIs and MGT that follow him. Now, let's get into this. Page number 42. This is what the message is explaining about not harming ourselves. All right, coming from Hadith to Live, 1972, page number 42. All right, the message is said, fast once a month for three days or four days or for whatever length of time you are able to go without food, without harming yourself, without harming yourself. You know what I mean? So the restricted laws of Master Muhammad is we do not commit acts of violence on ourselves. You know what I mean? So you don't want to hurt yourself with any fast, whether it's in December, June, September, or any time of the year. You know what I mean? You know, the uh, three Fs is um, first is for fasting. If you could take and fast the first, second, and third day of every month, which is not practical for hardworking men and women, but for some people, they can do that. You know what I mean? Um, if you confine your eating between 4 and 6 p.m., I, I got a whole book on that called The Angel's Diet, like 300 pages, give you all the sciences on it. The sciences on, all, on the, all the stuff the message said, I give you the science of life on that. You know what I mean? You know, and um, basically, I have charts in there where I explain how the first eight hours, you got three eights, eight and eight, 16, that's another eight, that's 24 or technically exactly 23 hours, 56 minutes, 40 seconds in a solar day, according to Mass Farm Muhammad, the problem book and stuff, the 99 actual facts. All right, so you can, in the winter time, like during Ramadan, you're going to notice that as we get near the end of Ramadan, it's going to get dark earlier and earlier. You know what I mean? So, so in the wintertime, you 
eat like 4 p.m. every every evening. I mean, um, in the fall, you modify it, you tweak it. I mean, see the see the the the, the cycles, the, the astronomy, not the astrology, the science of the spiritual sciences, the astronomy of our universe is based on violence, on my act. I mean, and you understand what we call winter, um, spring, um, summer, fall, and the cycle repeats itself. Everything operates, that pendulum, that's the law of the pendulum. Now, I mean, actions and reaction, cause and effect. Now, I mean, so um, in the summertime, the sun going to take longer to, to uh, set. Now, I mean, so, so it's like um, you want to eat like around 6 p.m. in the summertime. I mean, and if you can't do six, no later than 8 p.m. I mean, but you don't want to go to sleep because it's three cycles, eight hours, eight, eight hours. Uh, the first eight hours is the time of elimination, basically. You get up in the morning, what you do, you urinate, you poop, you brush your teeth, you shower, you bath, you do your hair, your nails, your toes, whatever your thing. Me, I, I need to clean my glasses. <laughs> I mean, I always touching my glasses, my dirty hands. Not me, but um, you you eliminate the toxins from the temple. Not this temple, not that temple, not the mosque, not the masjid, not the, you are the temple. You are the mosque. You are the university. Okay. So you, you eliminate the negative. All right. Um, first eight hours. In that next eight hour cycle, that's the time of ingestion. That's when you eat 4 p.m., 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. I mean, that's when you eat your one meal a day. Then, in the last eight hours, that's the time of digestion. So here you had a cycle of elimination, the first eight hours in the morning. The next eight hours in the early evening, late afternoon, is the time of ingestion. So you went from elimination to ingestion, now in the last eight hours, digested. I mean, you literally, like, my wife would be a baby, like, hey, ain't you hungry or something? I said, blue, 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 blue. No, that's my body digesting that stuff. <laughs> I mean, meaning, meaning that you're processing the meal that you eat. Your body is efficient. My stomach is real efficient. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, eating one meal a day and fasting for the first three days of each month especially if you're a vegetarian, is going to improve the quality and the quantity of your life. Now, I mean, mentally and physically. Now, I mean, and, and don't get spooky if you don't be perfect in that. The messenger himself was not perfect. The messenger himself told us specifically, he said, I act a fool sometimes. He said, I don't be um, restrictive in how I eat. I mean, the message, you see him eating ice cream. He said he loved them blueberry pies. He had diabetes, actually. You know what I mean? So the message is, he explained to us, he said, if I wouldn't suffer these sicknesses and ailments if I would obey Allah's teachings on how to eat the live. You know what I mean? He said, but um, the Bible prophecies have to be fulfilled. And all the afflictions, he was afflicted. He said, but I learned how to teach y'all, I learn from y'all by experiencing this stuff myself. So you can't fool the message. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, um, I've been a minister 40 years. Now I mean, and a lot of people come with the holier than thou stuff. Thinking the fuck. Now I mean, they sneak and eat, sneak and drink. <laughs> I mean, but um, we're going to get into that in page 57. It's no need for none of that. You have to just be true to you. <laughs> then you can be true to everybody else. All right. So the messenger, remember, he said, fast once a month for three days or four days or for whatever length of time you are able to go without food, without harming yourself, and you will feel good. So that's How to Live, Book 2, 1972, page 42. Now. I just gave y'all exactly what the messenger said about that. All right, now we're going to go into page 47. All right, talking about um, when a law person, you know what I mean, 
and no fast. Like you read your Bible, um, those that followed the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law, they was like, this man, Jesus, he's supposed to be a Jew, a Hebrew or Israelite, and they don't observe the fast. They work on the Sabbath. And he like, y'all spooked out your mind with this spooky stuff. I mean, so let's look at this in context here. Page number 47. All righty. Now, I'm going to read to y'all. Hold on one second here. Let me see something. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to read to y'all from page 47. How to eat the live. Of course, I had this book like 40 years, so it's all marked all up and everything. I love studying, 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 research, and research, and verify, verify. I mean, you know, but he explained to us after a fast of three days from that to nine days, these particles of food and poison that have accumulated will be eliminated. The blood is being cleansed of its impurities because impurities have nothing to keep them in power to live. Therefore, they die and lead a person happy and enjoying the results of a healthy body, which is the greatest enjoyment we can have. We are taught and all religions teach fasting, so that includes us too. Now, here's the clincher. Of course, of course, as long as we are in the presence of God, we do not have to fast. See, a lot of people don't really believe the black man is God. I mean, so, you know, when Jesus and his disciples was moving around Palestine about 2,000 years ago, his critics was like, y'all, you know, your, your fathers don't even um, observe the fast. You know what I mean? And he like, yeah, 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 yeah. We walking from city to city, <laughs> working hard. That metabolism... These dudes used to be fishermen. I mean, these dudes, they, they like to eat. They need to eat. They get sick if they don't eat. They get weak if they don't eat. They can pass out or fall off a cliff or something. They could harm themselves. You know what I mean? So he's like, it's, it's the Ramadan or fast. There's nothing spooky with either one of them. You know what I mean? You know, and as long as they're in the presence of their master teacher, Jesus, they ain't had a fast. God was right there. I mean, they like, we ain't got a fast. And the 19th, the message from Muhammad, right there. And he's like, I, if, if I'm over the messenger house and I'm on a fast and Sister Clara and them bring out some, some food, I'm a, I'm a be, it's, in Islam it's called a dab or mannerism. I'm like, I'm not even going to tell him I was fat. I'm going to get my grub on. <laughs> I mean, ain't nothing spooky. You're like, no, the message eat? I'm eating. I mean, I'm in the presence of God. Even though he's the message of law, I'm in the presence of God. You know what I mean? So, so you know, that's a science in and of itself. Now we're going to go into the specifics. And when I say specific, the messenger makes it very, 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 very clear in his teachings, that December is not a fast. If you think it's a fast, listen to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad himself. Listen up, fam. Turn to page number 50. December, not fasting. December, not. N-O-T is not. Like, yo. You mean December, December? Ramadan is not fasting? What the heck is Ali talking about now? He's always trying to sign stuff up. I'm going to give you the messages raw teachers. All right. How did the live book two, 1972? Ta-da! I love the messenger teachers, boy. You just don't know. Okay, let's get into this. So this is what I was saying about getting the big picture. The message, message grade dropped some jewels. I'm going to share with the message shared with us. Now, I mean, this ain't 
my teacher. This is the messenger of a law God who came in the supreme person of Master Farad Muhammad to more praises do forever as taught for three years and four months of 1,020 days to his first, last, and only message. You know what I mean? I said 1,220 days. Got to check into that. I mean, it's in the Bible. But, all right, the message says, we turn to abstaining from eating in the daylight hours during the month, during the month of December. This is, this is in no way, this is in no way, not symbolic, not kind of, in no way, according to the Alvalage Mama, this is in no way a fast. He didn't say fast. He put the word fast in all capitals with an explanation point on it. Look at that. Look at that carefully, family. This is in no way a fast. Boom. I can stop right there. But we're going to go further. <laughs> when we abstain from food for so short a time as for early morning until after sundown and darkness begins to appear, we cannot, we cannot, listen, family, we cannot call this a fast. Second time, he put fast in all capital letters to put emphasis on it so that you would not think that in December you're fasting. He said, it's not a fast. Let's go on. For we are eating the same way that we have always been eating. One meal in that day. It is, it is in capitals, emphasis. It is no fast, F-A-S-T, capital letters. It is no fast to me. Who's the me? The first, last, and only messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, not me, he said, it is no fast to me and, and to my followers. Are you a follower of your minister, your captain, your secretary? Are you a follower of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Think about it. That's what I'm said. Think five times. You might be right. This new thought shot, 24 billion miles per second. We got seven and a half hours brain, 14 billion brain cells. Each brain cell or neuron generates probably the 170,000 volt of electricity. Black man is God. Always was, always shall be. Let us continue. It is no fast to me and to my followers to eat a meal after Sunday. We cannot call it a fast. We cannot. We cannot call it a fast. Think about this. The message is so brilliant. I mean, look at it like this. During December, <laughs> during December Ramadan, we're taught not to eat from the break of dawn and as long as the sun is up, we, we eat one meal after sunset. I ain't going to say one meal. After the sunset, you, you eat and it's not a sin absolutely 100% um, righteousness if you want to eat breakfast. Um, I should have put it on here. The Sahur meal. Now, I mean, you can eat the Sahur meal. Um, the Sahur the Sahur meal. The Sahur meal is Your break fast or breakfast, if you will. You can you can eat the Sahur meal. Now, the reason why the messenger put this emphasis on this, because you have to understand something. Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims, Orthodox Muslims, they follow the Sunnah, which is beautiful. We believe that we follow the Sunnah too. We love the Katim that be on the Silla of the Prophets, Muhammad. 1400 years ago, thoughts of peace be upon him and all the prophets of the law. You know what I mean? But we're not trying to become Arabs. We're not trying to adopt the culture of the Arabs where we're, 
living like they live in a desert. That culture is is designed for them. I mean, they they you know, it's like you if you in the hot desert, it's like washing and purification is going to be a big thing. Like, I mean, like African society, some and some Arab society. They use the left hand for one thing, the right hand for another. You know what I mean? So that, that thing is like purification rituals with the ancient comedics or the Egyptians was real important. They would shave their hair, shave their eyebrows, they under the, they shave all the hair off their bodies. You know what I mean? For purification. It's it's a science. The the Bible, I know a lot of our Hebrew is like brothers, um uh like their long beards, but the message is considered long beards germ catchers. So the Bible says, um, thou son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thy beard. <laughs> I mean, so so there's there's a science to all this stuff. There's a cultural and historical, mathematical, natural and logical significance to all of the teachings of any spiritual science. OK, so the message made it crystal clear. Now. For I detract from that subject. Our Sunni Orthodox Muslims in general, during their Ramadan, their their traditional Ramadan, the Id Fitr, the Id Adha, I mean, of which I joined them with them on different occasions and I personally enjoyed myself. We had delicious festival. It is. I love that it is. <laughs> I mean, you get your grub on, it's you you learn good Good music, good lectures, um, the teachings of the Quran, and I mean, you, it's wisdom. I, I learned a lot of wisdom, a lot of that stuff. I love it. You know what I mean, no problem. It, it's not a kind. I'm not a mix of Latin and all that kind of stuff like that. There, you know what I mean. But I also know that the Holy Quran teaches us it's not righteousness if you stand up or bow down or face the east or the west when you before you pray. But it is righteousness that you submit to the will of the law that you believe in his messengers, that you believe in the books, that you believe in the angels. <laughs> I mean, so it's a science there. You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing spooky in the Quran at all. You know what I mean? You know, the Quran is not talking about some spook God in the sky somewhere. But but some people interpret that just like some people spook up the messenger teachers. Some people spook up Christianity. They spook up Buddhism and Hindu. Taoism. Some people get spooky with Egyptology. You know what I mean? So that's, that's all in it. All right. So, when the Orthodox Ramadan, they eat after so-called sunset. Of course, the sun is not rising nor setting. Fajr, Thor, Ars, Begrib, Isha, you know what I mean? The sun is not moving. It's the earth spinning around the sun. But they use the lunar account. They use the moon 240,000 miles away. That's the Holy Quran, Surah Badr, Kumar. Now, I mean, they use the moon instead of Al Shams, the sun. I mean, we use Al Shams like Ray, Ra, the ancient Kemetic Egyptian. Now, I mean, so we have a more mathematical science, spiritual science, a more accurate one, if you will. So when they, when they Ramadan, and they eat that one meal. When I used to Ramadan with them, it was like, hmm, interesting. Because before Ramadan, I only ate one meal a day anyway. <laughs> I mean, like, like we, I may go years eating one meal a day. I may go months eating one meal every other day. I may go months eating one meal every three days. Now, I mean, I, I even went, the longest I ever went personally is um, seven days. I mean, me and brother, shout out to brother um, Minister um, Kareem, Troy X. David. Now, I mean, me and him live together. It's my heart. Good brother. Now, I mean, but we would, we would fast for seven days. I, I remember um, from Minister Basil law. um, um, Robert Fortune, he, you know, him and his brother Tim, they excellent boxers from from Philly. Not me, but he always fighting the police and all that. Not me, and um, I got with him one day. I'm like, yo, let me ask you something, man. Why you spit on the guards, throw piss on them, and all that stuff, 
And then when they come around for child, you take the food from the oppressor hand and eat it. I'm like, see, my thing is, if, if I'm going if I'm gonna go gangster, I'm just going gangster. I'm going all the way out. All hey, this is my last day on earth. I'm going all out, folks. You know what I mean? That's it. But I don't play games with warfare. <laughs> I mean, it's like, no, nah, homie. That's why. That's one of the things I, 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 I taught in all kind of military manuals for the FOIs. Like, listen. Boys fight to see who win or lose. Men fight to see who live or die. If it ain't worth killing and dying over, don't play no games. I mean, somebody punch you in your face, stab them 30 times. <laughs> I mean, somebody sucker punch you, kill them. What, what, what other stuff is y'all talking about? Like, where y'all get this other stuff from? It's like, oh, I grew up in the belly of the beast. <laughs> I mean, it don't go like that. You know what I mean? So you never want war because you know like yo if i'm scared someone's dead <laughs> if, if i got if i'm having an anxiety attack i'm going on I, you got a problem kill me because i'm coming for you you know what i mean so so you know i had to get him balance and one of the things i noticed i moved him in the hut you know what i mean he he was christian but he fell in because he was a smart christian he wasn't he wasn't your average because this dude was like a scholar with that Bible. Like, he, like I know a lot of Christians that used to crush FOIs with that Bible. I know a lot of um I ain't say a lot. I know I know an old head Jehovah Witness that will crush the majority of FOIs and MDTs in Nature Slime because he know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? So so same thing with Sunnis. Um Shout out to um, Brother Abdul Malik. Malik know that he know the Quran. He don't believe no mystery of law. <laughs> he believed in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Hadith, as it is originally given. And he know Tafsir, the Arabia, all that stuff. But if you don't know what you're talking about, he'd be like, man, you crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, and um, you can't come to them with no pseudoscience. You can't, oh, the Amalaj Muhammad teaches us the black man is God, the white man is the devil. And they like, prove it. What you mean by that? You know what I mean? And, and if you can't explain that, but they can explain that thing, <laughs> you be taking your bow tie or putting your kufi on. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, that's, the, that's real rap right there. You know what I mean? So when they, when they Ramadaning, I'm used to eating one meal a day. So I'm like, eh, it's, it's not really not. It's a, it's a more cultural thing, but it's like, this is how we always eat. Like, not me, but all the FYIs, we, we all ate one meal a day. That's what we was doing. You know what I mean? And we might go to whole and be forced to eat three meals. You know what I mean? Um, come out, ha have to, um, we, 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 we malnourished, so now we got to eat chi cheese and, you know what I mean, try to get our weight back up and, you know what I mean, lift weights and go run and exercise, whatever. So it's like your knee out. Are your actions judged by your intentions? Depending on the circumstances. Now, I mean, you know, so the messenger thing is, how can this be a fast for FOIs and MGT? How can this be? He's the messenger said, it's not a fast to me nor to my followers because he, from Mass from Muhammad, he already eat one meal a day. He ain't eat one meal a day during Ramadan. He ate one meal a day before Ramadan, after Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it don't even make no sense that it could be psalmy or psalm. It can't be a fast to the FOIs and the GTs because that's how they eat the live. Eat one meal a day. You find that all in here. In book one, 1967. Now, I mean, so this is why he's putting capital letters or had the um, Supreme Secretary, John Ali, you know what I mean, um, putting emphasis on certain things. All right? Now, what is a fast? What is a psalm according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching? Fasting to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his followers, those who follow the messenger's message to guide you through this age of mess, goes like this. If you're going on a psalm or a fast, you're not eating or drinking anything for two to three days, two or more days at least. Three days for a spiritual fast, two days Two days is the minimum 
in the nation of Islam, according to the teachings of Al Balaj Muhammad, for a fast to be considered a fast. If you didn't, if you ate when the if you ate at nighttime, that's not fast. What did you talk? That's not a fast. <laughs> I mean, that's how to eat to live. A fast, according to Al Balaj Muhammad, is two days, forty eight hours. Let me prove it. I don't, I don't, I'll give you a way to message to say. You got to show and prove, not show and tell. How to eat the live. Book number two, 1972. Word for word, fams. Let's go. A fast should be from two to three days. A fast. He put A, capital, fast, capital, F-A-S-T. The rest is small again. A fast. He putting that emphasis on it again. A fast should be from two to three days without eating food. If we are seeking spiritual advancement, we should fast for three days. Okay. In the case of the Orthodox Muslims worshiping Ramadan by not eating until after sunset, this is where some FOIs and MGTs get spooky at. They looking at Ramadan like the Orthodox Muslims. They, they think that because they didn't eat breakfast and lunch and they ate dinner that they fasted in the month of December. No, you're not. <laughs> I mean, in the case of the Orthodox Muslims worshiping Ramadan by not eating until after sunset and darkness approaches, they can eat all night long if they want to. I know brothers that used to do that. <laughs> they did, oh, man, I was fasting. So, you know, we used to make prayer, make salat and all that. I mean, um, brothers eat a date uh, some figs or something like that, some raisins or something like that. They drink a little cup of water to activate that digest system. And then they pig out. <laughs> and I, I used to be joking like, yo, you don't supposed to eat three meals <laughs> at one time according to, you know, I because, you know, we we, we we friends. I mean, they 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 Sunnis, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Moors, Five Percenters, Pan-Africans, FYIs, we all together. You know, it's like a um, interfaith chapel, the institution is running the whole thing. It's like the Romans, they, you know what I mean? So, so we, we, you know, we, we good, we brothers, you know what I mean? So we, when you, when you're comfortable with your brothers, you never disrespect them or insult them, but you can, you can talk that talk. You now I mean? We, t we men, we, I mean, we, you know, we talk like men, so we joke around, have fun, you know what I mean? You know, but I'm like, um, I thought I read in the Hadith the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained it like this. He said, you should fill your belly one third of water. I'm paraphrasing this. One third water, one third food, one third nothingness. Anything after that is glutton. Is a glutton. You're being greedy now. You know what I mean? So, so it's like during Ramadan, some people mistakenly eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, then another dinner, all in one meal. And at the end of Ramadan, they big as a house. They obese. They got diabetes, high cholesterol, blood pressure boiling over. They great stroke out and die. The law is like, that's not <laughs> what I was talking about. You know what I mean? Like, y'all y'all got that little 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 twisted there. You know what I mean? So so it's like um the messenger did not look at his followers, Ramadan and like that. Okay. So he said, in the case of the Orthodox Muslims worshiping Ramadan by not eating until sunset and darkness approaches, they could eat all night long if they want to until the next morning at dawn. They called this a, quote, fast. All right. That was page 50. Okay. Now we're going to 52. We are not fasting in the month of December. I already proved that, but we're going to prove it some more. Because the message ain't say this one. He said a different place. He explained like this is his teachings, the original teachings. A lot of people overlook them, misunderstood them, misinterpreted them, whatever. But I'm giving you word for word, first hand source information. Directly from the Alam Elijah Muhammad. Okay. Hadith to live. Book number two. I'm telling you the year 1972. 
We have this available at our website. You could go on supremeangels.org if you don't have the messenger books. We got all the messenger books and literature, all that kind of stuff on there. We got a lot of new books coming out. I, see, I got that that ancient literature. I just went in the secret vaults. I got, I got some jewels for y'all. I mean, people are going to be surprised at what the message was teaching in the 30s. See, a lot of people, ain't, they, they like um, limit the messenger's teachers, but the messenger, he taught 44 years. I mean, he, 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 and in the early years, he used to go in. See, certain times, he, he used to, he'd tell you, he used to teach six hours straight. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he teach six hours straight, dropping all kind of jewels. And I'm like, oh, stop that. We want, that's, it's like a, a classic hip hop song, like a mixtape. You're like, yo, you hear what he just said? Oh, we want that. I mean, oh, let me get my pen and pad. I got to get notes on this joint. I got to listen to this like 10 times. You know what I mean? I play that joint when I'm going to sleep. You know what I mean? Let that, that go into my Ram and Ram sleep. You know what I mean? My rest. You know what I mean? Okay. So, page number 52. I Need to Live Book 2, 1972. Word for word, fam. Let's look. Let's look at this. So, I am not, I am not, this is Alan Balaj Muhammad is personally talking about this. I am not asking my followers too fast. Whew. So I am not asking my followers to fast in the month of December. The messenger is not asking the FOI and MGT to fast. Saw me in the Arabic. If you want to, we can get it. I, I, I know Tassir and all that. I know the Arabic too now. But I, go, I could go to the Quran and the Arabic, English, whatever way y'all want to do this. Hebrew, the Bible, the Torah, New Testament. The messenger teaches right and exact. I'll tell you, the messenger's message will guide you through this age of mess. All right? So I am not asking my followers to fast in the month of December because of the birth of a prophet Jesus, nor do we want to worship his birth or worship because of some great revelation was sent down to another prophet. No, it is just to keep my followers from worshiping falsehood instead of truth and to prevent them from spending their money in the falsehood instead of truth and to prevent them from spending their money in the falsehood of Santa Claus. There are so many untruths. There are so many untruths that the people of untruth, white race, have misled us in. We must come out of untruth. We must come out of falsehood. He said, I do know that fasting is good. I have tried fasting for many years myself. I do know that fasting is good for our health and fasting is good for our spiritual advancement. Remember, a fast, he said earlier, is from two days let me go back for a minute. Can y'all know that? A fasting is two days without food and drink. A spiritual fast is three or more days for a spiritual fast. Okay. Here it is again on page number 50 in case you forgot. A fast should be from two to three days without eating food. If we are seeking spiritual advancement, we should fast for three days. You cannot fast in 24 hours. <laughs> you know how much junk already in your system? Why are you fasting? You know what I mean? Come on. All right. But, page number 52 again, but you are not actually fasting. You are not actually fasting when you are going to eat every day, regardless to what time you may set for the meal. So if you eat at 8 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, 6 p.m. in the evening, that's not a fast. That's Ramadan. December right. That's like, no, brother, sister. That's not Sami. That's not fasting. That's that's just eating one meal a day. <laughs> I mean, so in December, it's like, yo, we got to get our people out of this Nimrod stuff, out of this Satan, Santa, um, Black Fridays and all the cells and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Actually, it helps us because, you know what I mean? You, you don't celebrate Christmas and all that kind of crap. You get you get the sales after all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you, you actually save money. But you are not actually, page number 52, but you are not actually fasting when you're going to eat every day regardless of what time you may set for the meal. 
if you eat within 24 hours, you cannot really consider it as a fast. And so I say, this is the messenger himself, the messenger said, I say to my followers, not anybody, but the message specifically is saying this. And so I say to my followers, all capital letters. He did this. I didn't do it. Look at it. All capital letters. He said, we are not fasting in December. Now, you may belittle the messenger's teachings or the messenger himself. But if you're a student follower of the messenger's teachings, this is his teachings. This is his mythology. This is his 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 system that he set up. This is how he won his followers to understand this thing. Okay? He said, and so I say to my followers, we are not fasting in December. We're just abstaining from taking apart with false worship. That was page 52. Got two more. Page 54. Not fasting again. Let's look at that one. How did you live? Book 2, 1972, page 54. Abstaining from food, all capital letters. Up here, small, all capital letters. Keep emphasis is directly from him. Because he's, keep in mind, each, each chapter is a different thing with him. All right. Abstaining from food from the rising of the sun until the sun sets, this is not fasting. This is not fasting. Now, should we ignore the messenger's message in this age of mess? Or should we be humble enough? The message said, superior wisdom should not be subjected to inferior wisdom. That's, that's Hakeem, wisdom. Now, I mean, Alim is the knowledge. Hakeem is wisdom. Alif is understanding. The Bible teaches us, get knowledge, get wisdom, but before you're getting, get understanding because understanding is the principal thing. It's not enough to have knowledge of self. You can't articulate it because you didn't study your lessons. You can't break it out. You didn't study the sciences. I mean, so you can't reflect the sunlight like the moon. You can't, you can't manifest wisdom to keep the water in check. Therefore, you can't have the experience or the actual understanding. So you have to show and tell instead of showing and prove it. The messenger teaches us in his last book, 1974, I'll say has arrived that the angels come to make sure no mistake is made. First, a law makes for himself a messenger. Then the law guy guides the messenger himself. He does not lead a messenger to do all of the guiding. Then the law guy sends angels to make sure that the message is taught the way that a master Muhammad wanted the Ambalaj Muhammad to teach it to us. Every FYNGT has this sacred and divine duty to teach the teachings of the Ambalaj Muhammad as he taught them. We're going to end with page number 57. And with all that Ramadan and fasting, I said early in the beginning, I said, basically, when you're dealing with the God's wisdom, <laughs> it's like Jesus explained to him when he was, why your followers don't observe the fast like the traditionalists and this, that? It's like, listen, we follow the spirit. Of, like, like Jesus and them, like, man, you know what I mean? Get out of here with that spooky stuff. I mean, like you, you come amongst the angels, they be on the tip, like, for real, for real. <laughs> this is this what you want to argue with me about? You seen me eating um, a Philly cheesesteak one o'clock in the afternoon, and and um, you feel as though that is so important that a brother, no, I mean, you should be a vegan and. You're supposed to fast and eat one meal a day and it's Ramadan and you're like, man, you talking to God, shorty. <laughs> I mean, it's like, nah, homie. Nah. I mean, like, we 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 just we just we just um 
flew in the town. We ain't come flying with no wings. We flew first class on the airplane. We just cut this deal, the, the, the bill down Balaj Muhammad to get this farmland. We, we feeding the children. We, we, we looking out for the elders. Now, I mean, we had, to, we had to shoot down Philly because fruit is on the streets. Now, I mean, we had, we had to have some business. I mean, we had to, you know, it's, it's a war going on. I mean, it's like, man, I, I got to be in fighting shape. Now, I mean, when, when the slaves in, in Alice Helley's um, book and TV series, Roots, Kunta Kente, when he was coming over here, you know what I mean? He was fasting. He's like, he's like and the Mandingo warrior, he eating the oatmeal. Like, this boy over here crying for you. Oh, no, oh, no. It's like, Kunta, Kunta, stop that fucking crying. What's fuck wrong with you? He's like, he's like, Kunta, Allah has made us warriors. We must fight for ourselves. Allah gave us the power to fight for ourselves. We have to do for self, Kunta. <laughs> he's like, I'm not eating the white man's porridge. I ain't eating that poison. Kunta, eat the food. Like, it's just it's garbage. Just like, Kunta, eat it because you're going to need your strength in case we could make a move and have to crush these slave masters. It's like, get that spooky stuff. You ain't in Africa no more. You ain't in no beautiful Moss Mary Ann. You're not in um, a law school in Mecca. You're not in, no, you're on the street right now, homie. <laughs> this great is for <laughs> you up Green County Supermax. You in the penitentiary, right? You in the yard with lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. You talking about we we got a war. They just they just made a move and stabbed brother so and so. We going in the yard this afternoon and get it in. And here you come with your spiritual self talking about I'm on a four-day drive fast. <laughs> Get your spiritual cream plug up. You in the way, man. All right, you you stay in. I mean, you y'all ready? Right, let's let's get out of here handle this. Now I mean, it's like nah, man. Nothing spooky with the gods. We 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 don't even think on them. That's that's like yo. The Bible teaches the 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 law was made for the sinners. That's for the ten percent. The rich, the slave makers, of the poor teach the poor lies. The five percent, the poor righteous teachers. Who do not believe in the teachers of the temperance? God, we got a duty, a sacred duty. We trying to elevate the mental consciousness and the rise up of the mental resurrection of the eighty-five percent, the mentally dead. They easily in the wrong direction, but they all it's heck to read in the right direction because they they believe anything the temperance tell them. I mean, so the messenger says this on page fifty-seven. How did you live, book two? 1972, fam. He said, actually, now he's going to a science. Actually, divinely, there is no fast set for the children of the light of God. And that fasting ceases. Actually, divinely, there is no fast set for the children of the light of God. I mean, it's like, nah, homie. You know what I mean, it's like, listen, fam. It's, it's like your neot, your your actions are judged by your intentions. Your actions may appear wrong, but your motives will bring your rewards. You don't seek to be seen of people. You seek to please Allah who came to person Masfar Muhammad in his first, last, and only message. And I leave you with the greeting words of peace and conclusion. It is crystal clear in the teachings, pardon me, in the original divine direct teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that the December Ramadan, Ramadan just means purification, like to burn something pure. You know what I mean? It's, it's like the summer month in Mecca. I mean, we would call it July in America. You know what I mean? So, so Ramadan is just a time to psychologically, socially, financially, politically purify ourselves from all of this pagan, Christian, bells on your doors, Satan, Santa, flying reindeers with red noses that light up and talking snowmen and 
Grinches that steal Christmas and uh, you name it. Just so much technology. You know what I mean? You know, parents scrape the back of the chimney talking about Santa Claus came down and bought all the toys and you know what I mean? The kids in the projects like, we don't even have a chimney. <laughs> I mean, like, Santa don't make sense and mommy and daddy, y'all ain't making sense. It's all of y'all lying. And now we wonder why our youth out in the street running wild. They like, man, y'all full of crap. <laughs> the spooky stuff. So, 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 so you got to give them reality. Now, I mean, you have to you have to give them self empowerment. You have to make them self leaders. You have to let them do for self. You got to get out that way. But you're like, we get out the way, they gonna make mistakes, and we didn't. Yeah, they gonna make mistakes, but they are gonna learn from their mistakes. Gonna lose some of them. That's human nature. Only the strong survive. Now, I mean, that's that's just that's just how it goes. Now, I mean, you know. Josh, I heard Josh they drop an important point. He's playing like in Africa. It's like, listen, man. No, I mean, you either eating or you getting ate. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 the psychology. They be like human nature, your reptilian part of your brain. It's like fight or flight. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's it's like that's that's just this universe. I explained in um twenty four Sparks book years ago how. The universe is a dichotomy. You got exploding atoms, exploding suns, exploding stars, supernovas. I mean, you got meteors crashing into the, now I mean, it's stuff blowing each other up, boom, planets bumping in each other, and boom, it's just chaos. But out of that chaos comes order, a balance, equilibrium, Attraction, repulsion, cohesion, assimilation, dissimulation, creation, projection, reception, and intuition. Here come the gods. Peace, family. The struggle continues. I'm your brother, Brother Minister Ali.